What's going on guys? This is Brain from Events, but Hockey Advising here. And today we'll be talking about five things not to do when you're playing hockey. Typically, you know, I stay away from topics like this usually because I'm not one to go and tell people, you know, what to do, what not to do, and all that kind of stuff. But in this case here, I would say, you know, if you do go and do one of these five things, you're gonna shoot yourself in the foot pretty bad. So I would say probably best here to, you know, kind of follow my advice, uh, follow my guidance on this, and uh, you know, don't do those five things. It'll It'll just make your life so much simpler moving forward. All right, now before we dive into those five things here, just a quick reminder as always to absolutely smash that like button if you haven't already. And if you're new here, feel free to hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you never miss another video again moving forward. All right, so let's dive right in here. First thing on our list, is negative body language. We all know when a player has negative body language out there, right? Things like slamming the stick on the bench out of frustration, shaking their head if a teammate misses a play or if they, if they mess up or anything like that, uh, sulking on the bench, you know, letting your, your head hang low and all that, even if your team scores something like that and you stay sulking on the bench. All of these behaviors, you know, is what I would say is negative body language. And it's something that you absolutely don't want to do because it just brings down the entire team, right? And it's just a bad look on you too. Not only does your coaching staff and your teammates see that, so they, they can lose respect for you if you do that consistently, right? But the scouts in the stands and the coaches in the stands, they see it as well. You know, whenever a player slams a stick, everyone in the rink sees it. So it's really not a good look on you. And it, it's, it's just something that you want to avoid altogether. So if you can, do not show this kind of body language. So instead, if you're frustrated, instead of showing it with negative body language, hold off on that impulse and try and find strategies to either let it serve you or to just change your state completely. So the first one that comes to mind here is, you know, we've talked about this before, the mental reset button plus a deep breath. That really, really completely changes your state. If you're just starting to feel a little bit antsy or whatever, do that on the bench in between shifts and you'll be good to go. If you're really feeling frustrated that game, things are just not going well, if the mental reset button's not working, if you're if you're just finding that, you know, I got all this pent up energy here, well, use that, you know, try and harness your dark side. We talked about it before, it's an advanced technique, but if you can kind of, you know, tap into that energy in a controlled manner, uh, don't go ballistic, but just t tap into it in a controlled manner, that can serve you and you can take it out on your opponents on the ice in a clean way, of course. But you can use that energy if ever you're, you're feeling that. So so that's another way to go about it. And also too, like if you're just feeling frustrated throughout the season, things aren't going your way, find someone you trust to vent about it. Oftentimes billets can serve as that role, your parents, you know, a trusted teammate, anything like that you can talk to about it and that's really gonna help out vent that frustration. It's gonna prevent you from letting that build up and you know, kind of translating into negative body language. So I would say follow these three uh, strategies to prevent that negative body language there. Number two here, yelling at the refs. Now I see this so much, you know, even with teams I play with, you know, it's, I, I, there's always players that are yelling at the refs consistently, which is kind of funny, but at the same time, it's it's not you know a good thing to do because think about it. If you're consistently yelling at someone, let's say use the ref in this example, you're consistently yelling at them, telling them they're terrible, all this kind of all this kind of nonsense. Uh, of course, like they're not going to react the right way, right? They're they're human beings, and some some refs have. Th pretty thick skin or most refs I would say so usually they let it slide but you know other refs like if you do that they'll just give you a misconduct they can get kick you out of the game and that's not helping anyone and it's hurting your team next time you have the impulse to yell at the ref just take a deep breath and, and calm down before you do and only approach a ref if you have a letter and if you um, are in a calm state of mind if you're feeling all frustrated it's not the time to to yell at the ref or to yell at anyone in all honesty just take a little second you know take a step back before you go and talk to them or you know have the urge to yell at them i would say that's the best way to approach it because again yelling at the refs accomplishes absolutely nothing it just hurts your team number three here on our list is yelling at a teammate or giving them the cold shoulder now you know this again is another one that serves absolutely nothing um but it actually happens quite a bit i see like great teams kind of break apart because you know teammates have something against one another or they're yelling at each other all the time and that does nothing you know it has multiple problems here first like if you're yelling at a teammate or giving them the cold shoulder it makes them feel terrible and it can affect their play right but not only that it kind of makes you look bad if you're yelling at your teammates all the time they're probably going to build a resentment towards you if you do it all the time now if it happens you know once in a blue moon you kind of slip up 
and you say, I'm sorry, you know, you take ownership for that and all that, teammates will understand, you know, we all get frustrated. You know, I've done that in the past too. And, and after I said, you know, I'm sorry, I, I, I just was frustrated at that point. But if you can try and hold back on that and, and don't let this become a consistent pattern because it really, really can affect the over t overall team chemistry and teammates can, um, you know, eventually uh, start to resent you if you do it all the time. So instead of yelling at them and giving them the cold shoulder and all that, you know, when you're in a calm state of mind, you know, again, take a deep breath if you're frustrated against a teammate or something like that. And then once you're calm, go talk it out with them. Chances are that they might be frustrated with you with something or, or whatever it is. If you talk it out, most of the time, the problem resolves right then and there. So I would say that's, that's the approach to go whenever you know, you're feeling frustrated with a teammate. So number four on our list here, all offense, no defense. We all know this player, right? We all know the guy that doesn't back check, that doesn't care about defensively, that just cares about their stats, right? And um, you know, it's okay to, to be more offensively inclined. There's a bunch of players that are like that. But what I'm talking about here is the guy that really doesn't care about defense, doesn't care about the team, he just wants to boost his stats. And you just do not want to be that guy. Teammates don't like that person. Uh, the coaching staff doesn't like that person. And ice time doesn't like that person, okay? If you're not good defensively, if you don't, uh, you know, back check, finish your checks, you know, block shots, uh, and, and do all the little things, right? have good positioning, all that. If you don't do those little things, you know, the coaches see that, and unless you're an absolute superstar, but even the, the best players defensively, they somewhat at least hold themselves accountable. And uh, if, if, if you don't do all those things, basically the, the coach is just not gonna put you out there because he won't trust you. You know, you're gonna cost the team more than you benefit the team. So I would say, you know, just do yourself a favor. You don't have to be the world's best defensive player, but just do like the little things like I mentioned, and it's really gonna go a long way. It's gonna make you a more round, well-rounded player. Coaches are gonna trust you more, your teammates are going to respect you more for it and you're going to get more ice time as a result you know so it's a, it's a win-win for everybody uh, don't be all offense have some defense in your game all right and number five here is talking back to the coach on the bench after they give you some advice this is ab absolutely the worst thing you can do the only thing you should do on the bench is just nod your head and say coach i understand coach I understand even though you might disagree with it okay because on the bench is not the time to get an argument with a coach to talk back with them you know the the only time you talk back to them is if they ask you a question or if they're they're talking to you calmly but if they're giving you constructive feedback or even sometimes they're yelling at you you know the last thing you want to do in a heated moment is to talk back to them, okay? Trust me on this one, I've seen it happen, it never ends well. There's not one moment where a player talks back to a coach on the bench where it ends well, okay? So instead of doing that, you have to bite your tongue, not say anything, and then not approach a coach in between periods, not after the game, you approach them the next day after you slept on it, okay? If it's bothering you. Usually when you sleep on it, you know, half the time it won't bother you enough for you for you to be even worth it to go talk to them. But if ever it does still bother you, it's something that you disagreed with, go talk to them the next day. Trust me on this, if you follow this advice, it will make your life so much better. So absolutely do not talk back to the coach, go talk to them the next day. All right guys, so let's just do a quick recap of the five main things that we talked about here. So first, you do not wanna show negative body language on the ice, you want it to be more of a positive body language. Second, do not yell at the refs. Third, do not yell at your teammates or give them the cold shoulder. Fourth, implement some defense in your game, not just all offense. And fifth, don't talk back to the coach or give them attitude on the bench. And again, if you're new here and if you got any kind of value out of this video, consider hitting that subscribe button and notification bell so you never miss another video moving forward. All right guys, that's it for the video. Thanks so much for watching. We hope you enjoyed it and we'll catch you on that next one.